We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. And we're back on Liberty Nation Radio, heard coast to coast on the Radio America Network. We're continuing our conversation with longtime host of this here radio show, Mr. Tim Donner. Earlier we were talking about the debate angles and strategies that could be employed by either Donald Trump or Kamala Harris. Now, I want to verge, Tim, onto something relative to the two presidential contenders, and that's the polling. Now, let me just set out uh, what I've seen, what I've noticed at, at present is that Kamala Harris is leading in almost all national polls and that anybody who's explaining the national polls is not pointing out that that's entirely irrelevant. Why do you think that is? What, why they're not relevant or why they keep pointing them out? The second one. <laughs> the second one. Um, because it fits their narrative that Kamala Harris is perfectly capable of being president that she's doing better than Joe Biden. She's putting the pressure on Trump. And the best way to show that is to show national averages, uh, which includes, I think, a lot of votes of frustrated Democrats who just couldn't get themselves to vote for Biden because he literally couldn't do the job. So I think this is a reflection of a lot of Democrats coming home to a candidate who's younger and more dynamic. Of course, that's not very hard to do when Joe sure. Biden was the person you're replacing. But she's getting an incredible bump from the Democratic National Convention, from the relief that Biden isn't there anymore. Uh, and so what they've done is they fabricated joy about someone who has never elicited joy in her entire political career. I mean, you think about it. Kamala Harris has elicited many responses over her career as a district attorney, uh, attorney general, senator, and vice president, but uh, likability has never been one of them, uh, to say the least. So they have to try and say that that's always been overrated because the country didn't really know Kamala Harris. Well, now they will get to know her. And I think the hardest thing to do as a candidate is to try and pretend to a national audience that you're something that you're not. It doesn't work. So Kamala Harris is busy rehearsing. And I sense, Mark, she'll probably be very, very over-rehearsed for this uh, debate. But to the issue of national polls, it shows you how little they matter because uh, the last two elections, because Trump was beaten in the popular vote handily in both 2016 and 2020. And in both cases, he came within 50,000 votes of winning. He actually won in 2016. And if about 50,000 votes had changed in three states in 2020, he would have won as well. That renders this national vote totally irrelevant. It comes down to the seven swing states. It always has. Those are the ones that matter. That's where all the candidates are spending their time. That's where the election will be decided. So she and Tim Walls and J.D. Vance and Donald Trump will be spending all their time in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, uh, North Carolina, and maybe Nevada, because that's where the election will be decided. And I think Trump still has a structural advantage in those states. He's still got more states in his column secure, I believe, at this point than Kamala Harris. But so much rests on this debate. I consider the polls at this point to be virtually irrelevant but if you do want to read them, the best way to read the polls at this point is how I headlined my story on Labor Day, dead heat on Labor Day, where it goes from there. Michael Dukakis was ahead by 17 points and he lost by eight. Then again, 2020, Donald Trump was behind by seven points in May. And he pretty much stayed that way the rest of the race. So you have races that are stable and races that are not stable. 
this is clearly not a stable race, which makes it impossible to predict what will happen uh, come November 5th. I wonder if part of that is because Kamala Harris has only really been the candidate for, at time of recording, I think 45 days, yeah. which is, we, we usually get uh, a fairly firm sense at the beginning of the primary seasons about who's going to be the candidate. There's the breakaway candidate, or at least, for example, in the 2020 uh, election, it was South, by the time South Carolina primaries came around, that was, that was the defining moment for Joe Biden. But after that, it was pretty much assumed he's the candidate and that, so yeah, there's yeah. months before you get to the labor day which is the official official start of right the season uh tim one final question for you if i may um as you say it's all about the battleground states here and for me i think pennsylvania is about to earn its reputation as the keystone state how do you think that's playing out for either candidate just very quickly on that please well, that race looks absolutely dead, even in Pennsylvania. Most of the polls reflect that. There's been a bump for Harris since Biden left the ticket. That was quite predictable. It's going to come down to a turnout in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, whether the black vote really will turn out for her the way that Kamala Harris hopes. And then it's Erie County, which is probably the single most important county in the entire country because it's a bellwether. Whoever wins Erie County in Pennsylvania always wins the presidential election. So you'll be seeing an awful lot of time spent in a relatively small county in Pennsylvania called Erie County over the next several weeks. The, the new official homes of candidates Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Tim Donald, thanks ever so much. Pleasure, Mark. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides.